Good morning, Facebook. Hello, hello, good morning. Going live here and um, waiting for the circle to finish. And there we go. Good morning, October 7th. Uh, it is Thursday, October 7th. It's about 6.22 a.m. There's my notification. Let's make sure my sound is on. There we go. Beautiful. Sound check done. So sometimes I don't know if the microphone's working or not. Um, I always want to check that. So uh, it's 622 in the morning. Uh, I am live. Uh, busy day to day. I'm in my office early every day, but today, um, no exception. Um, we open up tonight. We've been closed the last two nights. We had a great two days, Jamie and I, although most of it was considered work. Most of it was in the restaurant. Um, we had a great wine tasting yesterday. Um, a new distributor came by um, and spent some time with us. And it turned out we had a lot of connections with him from his previous jobs. We know the owner of the restaurant in the city. And so it was um, it was nice to uh, connect with the new wine rep. And um, we tasted some really awesome older Portuguese wines in the mid-90s, some whites and some reds. And um, that... Uh, that we can get a good deal on. It's not that the wines are um, are bad or anything. It's that the style of wine this winery makes, um, they switch styles because it was a very old school style, cement vats, and wasn't what Robert Parker's looking for. So the wines didn't get good ratings, although the wines are ama truly amazing, especially aged like this, are just like really a treat. So we're going to bring some of those wines in and do a wine dinner with those, which will be a special, special wine dinner. Um... Sean saying interruptions. Sorry about that. Um, the internet has been very spotty lately. So um, let's see. I'm on my wonder. Let me switch signals here. Hold on, folks. I'm going to switch Wi Fi networks. All right. I switched Wi Fi networks. If I'm still here, just say hello, still here. Um, I switch networks, usually it won't drop me if I do that. Um, I switch to a stronger network. For some reason, it's defaulting on a weaker network in my office. So hopefully I am still um, still here. If I'm still here, just drop a comment, still here. Uh, good morning, everybody. Um, Sean, Catherine, got a bunch of people logging on. It's early. Uh, thank you for tuning in early. Uh, so... We have a Finger Lakes trip coming up. We have room for like two more people on the Finger Lakes uh, trip. Um, some people are saying, oh, you know, the price, because I think it's like $900 for the weekend. We take care of everything. Um, and the this is one of the challenges right now. Um, hotel rooms went up drastically versus our last trip. Busing, the transportation, went up five to $600 uh, just like that. And we said, well, this wasn't the price we did in the spring. She goes, well, that was the price we did just to move our vans, move our buses. And now, you know, we're booming up here, and we had to raise all of our prices. So literally, we barely raised our price from our previous trip in March, and we've experienced some massive increases. Jamie and I are running numbers on the trip, and um, we're not even going to make money on the trip. We barely cover our own expenses. Uh, so, of course, any business owner would say, well, gee, I don't want to do that trip. Let's cancel it. But we're not like that because we want to show you a good time and, and uh, show you some of our favorite wineries up there. And um, But we do need to get two more people to book that trip uh, so we're not out of pocket on that trip. But prices went up drastically. We only raised our price like 65 bucks to, to our guests. Um, and part of it was because we didn't even really know how much prices were going up until we actually started booking things. We knew the hotel rooms were going up. We knew that 100%, which is why we raised the price 65 bucks. But it is such a good deal. I mean, if you go up there yourself, you're going to spend on a hotel room 300 bucks uh, plus um, 350 at the at the Harbor View. I mean, it, it, the hotel rooms are beautiful. You're going to spend 350 times. So you're going to spend 700 bucks. Then by the time you hire a driver and all your meals, your three meals and your wine, you're going to be at about the same price that we're charging for a a small uh, boutique group tour uh, led by Jamie and I to some of our favorite wineries where we have our own private private tastings um, and have everything figured out for you and taking you to all where all the great wineries are. So it's really, when you look at it that way, it's really a great deal. It's not expensive at all. It's Jamie, if you can drop the price on that, that'd be great. Um, let me see if I can grab a link to that. 
So, um, let me see if I can grab, grab our link to where that is. Give me a moment here. I should have had this ready. Finger Lakes. All right. So. And this is November 5th to the 7th. Um, so let's see here. There we go. I just dropped that link there. So if anyone wants to check out some information, we need two more people to make that trip, to pull that trip off. Uh, we have a lot of people that are interested. A lot of people emailed us last week and called us last week. Nobody has actually pulled the trigger, though. So we have two more spots left. Uh, so, yeah, so prices, even in the transportation world, in the hotel world, the prices are going up like crazy, which is just another challenge that we're facing here. Um, we were just to Mexico and trying to figure out a Mexican trip. Uh, it's easier to get in and out of Mexico uh, with COVID regulations. It's much easier and wine country there is beautiful. It's a Napa Valley of, of Mexico, just stunning. And even some of the prices there for, for stuff like hotel rooms are like just wow. It's like it's it's crazy. Um, but the hotel rooms are amazingly, amazingly awesome. And they're awesome, awesome hotel rooms. We posted some pictures. Follow us on social media on here and our Instagram for some more pictures of all that stuff. All right, so, um, and one of the other biggest challenges right now in the restaurant world is it's not only the pricing of food, and they're predicting pricing is going to go up another 30 40% on, on some basic things like beef, ground beef, things like that, and seafood. Uh, and we already know the prices are, are through the roof. Um, it's just crazy, but that's one thing they're saying. But besides the prices going up, most of our distributors have raised their minimums and cut back the delivery days we used to buy we do buy from a company called baldor which gets us a lot of great local things and we used to get from them six days a week hundred dollar minimum it was great i could order until 11 p.m at night and six days hundred dollar minimum and i kind of i always thought that you know that um i always i always thought that that it was kind of like not in their good business sense to have such low minimums in six days so i was expecting some kind of price increase um, from them and uh, from them. So I was like, okay, yeah, at some point they're going to realize that they're probably not, probably isn't good. Just looking at the numbers. So I, I knew something was coming. So yeah, something came. They, they raised our minimums to 250, six days a week. I'm like, okay, not bad, not bad. Now they cut our delivery back to three days a week, $400 minimums. Um, and every vendor is going in this direction. Either vendors are telling restaurants that, hey, we can't, we can't we can't deliver to you tomorrow uh and this is happening to restaurants i was in restaurant depot earlier in the summertime and i ran into i ran into i always run into people i know there from other restaurants so we always talk and it's like social time for me when i go there and one of the other big restaurants in the new pulse area he was like yeah my vendor told me last night that called the sales rep called me and said we're not delivering your order this week you can't and he's a big restaurant and lots of food. So he was there stocking up at restaurant people, like stocking up uh, two, three carts. And I was like, oh, wow. He's like, yeah, I, I was told the last night that they're not going to deliver. They don't know when they're going to deliver. They don't know when they can deliver. They've already raised my minimums and this and that. I was like, wow. And you read on these on these forums on Facebook, these, these, these groups, restaurant owners are saying left and right, like Cisco dropped me, US Foods dropped me, they said they weren't gonna drop me, they raised my minimums, they did this, they did that, and then they, at the end of the day, they just can't deliver the products. And I heard like in Kansas City, the whole Cisco warehouse shut down because they didn't have drivers. So um, that's another major challenge, what's happening. And I've noticed when I've gone to Restaurant Depot for things here in the last month, that their shelves on certain items are just empty. Like they don't, they don't have certain things. Because all of the um, all these restaurants, local restaurants, are, are flooding Restaurant Depot to pick up these things that they can't get from the distributors and buy from there. And um, you know, there's certain things that I was like, "Wow, how can you be out of like calamari? How can you be out of out of shrimp? How can you be out of this?" And that's probably the reason why. Uh, I know this week for us, it was extremely hard to get our chicken thighs to make our tikka masala. Extremely hard. So I spoke to one of our other vendors that we've been dealing with for, I've been dealing with as a distributor since we moved back in 2000, so 21 years, 22 years. I said to my sales rep yesterday, I said, when are you going to tell me that 
deliveries are going up, prices are going up as far as minimums and and deliveries going down. He's like, Marcus, I'm actually going to tell you the opposite right now. Um, we're actually lowering our minimums and we're actually increasing our delivery days because all these other distributors can't get their act together and we can. This is the chef's warehouse. Um, with other vendors can't get their act together, so we have our act together, and we're actually lowering minimums and going in and getting all the business that these other distributors can't can't handle. Um, so we're picking up accounts, and he goes, "We're really not going to be affected in your area. Um, your minimums going to be the same, and your three days of delivery going to be the same." And this was the distributor in the very very beginning, where when we first opened, we couldn't get a lot of the stuff that we were using here, so I had to drive to the Bronx to pick up a lot of a lot of items and for the first year and a half two years i drove to the bronx to, to get stuff from them i drove to jersey city uh to a company there jmac uh to pick up our all of our frozen salmon and our frozen wild salmon and i would drive to these companies to pick up because the ingredients just weren't available that we were looking for back in 2002 2000, 2003 2003 and after a, a full year year and a half of driving to the bronx the, the rep from from chef's warehouse was like you know um, now that you're established and we see that you're doing business, we'll start delivering to you. And I was like, that is the best news ever. So um, this company has been really awesome since she, when I started, when we first came back from Colorado, I was working in Westchester. So I've had a relationship with them for 22 years. So the same rep too, by the way, the same sales rep, same exact sales rep. So um, he was like, Marcus, I'm going to tell you the opposite. Our minimums are going down and our delivery days are going to be more frequent. I just was going to go and pick up the slack. I was like, that's the best news ever. Um, so, and they started, they started expanding, even what they, even what they offer, they started expanding. So that was the good news. So that's one of the, one of the bright spots here. But, you know, if you go into a restaurant now and they don't have the food you're looking for or something, you know, it's, it's not their fault. A lot of times it's just not their fault, um, to get staff to show up, to do all these things. If you go into a restaurant right now and write a bad review without saying something to the staff or the management, shame on you. Um, that just hurts the restaurant. That hurts the restaurant so bad. Any restaurant you do that to, it just hurts them. Um, speak up and say something. Um, speak up and just, just say, you know what, this wasn't what I was expecting. And let the restaurant handle it. If they don't handle it, then go on and write a bad review. We had a guest here last week. Um, it was on a Thursday night or something. And they wrote, gave us a one-star review because the ribeye was fatty. Um, they were sitting outside, which they could have sat inside if they wanted to. We were, we offered both, both in or out and, and they tipped their 20% on the bill. They told the server, everything was fabulous. They ate everything. They ate everything, told the first, everything was fabulous. They'll be back. And then they go online and write a one-star review, how everything was so terrible. And I'm like, why did they just lie to us? Like, why did they go on? I mean, like, why did they just lie straight to our face straight to, cause the, our staff was like, this is one of our days in Mexico. Our staff was so confused. They were like, they were like, these aren't the people that we waited on. Like they, like they totally, everything was fantastic, great. We ate everything, and and they looked at the pictures they posted, and they're like, well, that's them. That's the pictures. This is the food they ate. Like how did they? My staff was like, I don't understand how they had a bad experience here. Like everything was so great. Like, folks, don't lie to people. Don't. It only hurts things in the long run. Don't lie to people. Tell them, you know what? It wasn't what I was expecting. I was expecting something different. And, you know, it turns out that they mentioned price. They mentioned price in, 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 the, in the review. Folks, food is expensive now. Food has always been expensive. The food we bought because we buy organic, natural, hormone-free, antibiotic-free. You know, we buy all the good stuff. Our food has always been expensive. And now it's even more expensive. So we've been forced to raise our prices. All these restaurants have been forced to raise their prices. So they mentioned price. And I got to tell you, nine out of ten times that somebody complains about something, when when they write these reviews, it's price driven. They're they're out of their league, they're out of their budget, um, they're out of their budget with what they wanted to spend, and so now, because they're spending more than they wanted to, they look for reasons for everything to be bad. Well, if this was thirty dollars, it should have been this way, you know. But if it was twenty dollars, it would have been totally fine, right? Uh, or twenty five dollars. But they're, when they're out of their budget, is when they start complaining. Folks, speak up when you're in a restaurant. Totally speak up. Uh, and on top of it, these people had actually had a coupon. They had a promotion. They went online, signed up for a promotion, got $10 off to purchase a two entrees. So they even got $10 off. And they still, still, you know, said, oh, the price. I'm going to give her a call later because we have all their information here because they signed up and printed out the email and phone number and everything. So I'm going to give them a call later and say, you know what? 
I would have loved to have solved your problem while you were here. I would have loved to. The staff was totally thrown off because, I mean, I went to the staff and said, what happened last night? And like nothing, they went over every single table that was here, and I said, well, she complained about the ribeye and this and that, and, and they matched it up exactly, and the server was like, I'm so confused by this. I'm really just baffled because the conversations I had with them, the amount of food they ate, they said nothing. It was like, we'll be back, and this and that, and then you go online. We're never going back again. It's expensive. Uh, the ribeye rib had fat on it. Um, things weren't seasoned properly. And, and granted, things probably weren't seasoned properly. Um, granted, we probably could have put more salt in the vegetables or the potatoes could have been seasoned better. Uh, so, you know, there's things that I've been willing to totally accept in that review, totally accept. And, and you know, we were going through um, some staffing difficulties in the kitchen. We, had, we went from four cooks to zero cooks. Um, literally four cooks to zero cooks in a matter of two weeks. That's why Jamie and I were in the kitchen, or Courtney and I in the kitchen for a week and a half prior to going to um, to Mexico. And Michelle is back, who's our who's our main chef in the kitchen, who's been with us. Uh, she wasn't feeling well. And when you don't feel well, you can't have people come in. They have to get a negative COVID test. And even though you get a negative COVID test, if you don't feel well, you're still you know it's still hard to have you come in if you don't feel well, even though you have a negative COVID test. So. Um, and the other person was going through through a lot in their in their in their life, so they couldn't come in. So we went from literally from four cooks to zero cooks, and so Michelle came back, and we were training a new person, Soleil, who's doing a fantastic job, but he's not 100% um, up on our seasonings yet. You know, on on salting everything, and it's something we always have to work with staff. And and part of the issue is our salt is different than most restaurant salt, and when you're using kosher salt or iodized salt, it's much stronger than the Redmond Real Salt, much stronger. So as you're putting salt on, you think, well, gee, I've been using the salt all my life, and you season something and you taste it, it's like, well, no. So it's just something that we have to go through with every single chef that comes in is adjusting to the salt that we use to make sure there's enough salt. So I'm sure there wasn't enough salt. It was this third day working. I'm sure there was enough salt, so this is something we're working with them on. And um, so I'm sure that I'm sure that our vegetables could have had a little more salt, but that could have been easily solved by a salt shaker at the table. But again, if you're already in the mindset of I'm paying way too much here, I'm paying too much, and it's out of my budget, let me start nitpicking on everything, and um, and make make things wrong. Let me make start making things wrong. So Jamie and I know, like when we go out to a restaurant, we take our own salt. We take Redmond Real Salt. Jamie has it in a little little container, travel container. And we take our own salt to restaurants. And I'd rather the, the kitchen not use their toxic, toxic, highly processed salt and let me use my salt, our real salt, the Redmond Real Salt, that has all the minerals in it and it's not heated and just it's what comes out of the mine is, what, is, is, what, is what's in the container. So for me, that's like a blessing in disguise. Oh, this isn't, you didn't put enough salt on it? Don't salt it. I got it covered. So for me, it's a blessing in disguise. But for other people, you know, who they're out of their budget, all of a sudden it's now, it's now, you know, a one-star review because you can't add your own salt. And granted, yeah, we should have things seasoned properly. And so that, that's a mistake on our side. But a lot of times people people come in and say, I want no salt. I, I want vegetables with no salt. I want to add no, no salt to anything. And that happens very, very often, very, very often. So... Um, well, that's it for that. I got to get going. I got a meeting here in a couple of minutes um, uh, with one of our VAs. So I uh, got to get on track with that and busy day here. So, folks, have a great, great weekend. It's supposed to be nice out. We're doing live jazz tonight. Live jazz is tonight um, at in the restaurant, in the garden. It's going to be beautiful out. So um, uh, they will be outside playing. So that's really, really exciting. Like I said, stay tuned for more pictures of our upcoming trip, uh, of our past trip to Mexico, where um, it's now that we're planning a trip to Mexico, a wine tour. Italy's amazing. Italy's fantastic. Italy's, Italy's great. One of the downfalls to Italy is when we message our contacts there, they take so long to get back. They take like two weeks to get back. I'm like, okay, I'll be at your vineyard, you know, October 18th for 14 people. You know, and it takes them literally two weeks to get, this is the Italian culture. It just takes them a long time to answer emails and get back to you and answer a WhatsApp message. In Mexico, everybody I've messaged answers me back within the day, gets me pricing, secures the dates. I'm like, wow, like, like this is like really, really awesome. Like, like they're very eager and, and everybody we met in Mexico, I feel like all these places we went, we made new friends, um, all the vineyard owners, Everybody, I feel like we just made so many new friends, and it was great to walk into a vineyard. And I remember some of the vineyards, like we were waiting for our appointment, 
and the owner would walk out and say, Marcus, Jamie, glad you're here. Like, like, hey, like, like they already knew us. And, and it was just, it was an ama amazing connections in Mexico. Really, really amazing connections. Jamie and I are very glad we went. We're going to pop down again, Jamie and I, with um, restaurant, another friends of ours who own restaurants uh, back in December, just to go back and hit a few things that we didn't hit. We were focused on a lot of wineries and not as so much as restaurants. So there was a lot more restaurants we want to hit. Uh, I mean, um, uh, just south of Rosarita, on the way from Rosarita to um, Ensenada, is like the lobster capital of the world. There's a small little village there, uh, sitting there that that is known. Um, people from all over the world go there for lobster. Uh, so we definitely want to get there, experience that. Um, so we can put that on our itinerary for our guests. Uh, we definitely want to do um, a taco tour in Tijuana. Tijuana's five best taco spots. That's something we didn't do. There was just so much. There was so much thing, so many things to do in Mexico. And and uh, like I said, the Guadalupe Valley, the Valle de Guadalupe, is like the. It's like Napa Valley. It's like Napa Valley. Beautiful high end hotels, amazing vineyards, outrageous restaurants, outrageous restaurants there. And but we just didn't get enough of the food scene in, so we're gonna go back and check that out, and then um, finalize an amazing trip for next year that is gonna just be um, just a blockbuster trip to to Mexico, to Baja, Baja California, Baja Mexico. So we're super excited about that. And like I said, we made so many new friends down there, and it's just such it's just just wonderful. Um, so we're hoping to share that with everybody next year and book a trip. We can only take six couples with us. So we can only take 12 people. Or if you're singles and you do rooms, single rooms, um, we can only literally take 12 people with us. Uh, the bus does 14 people, and that's it. Uh, we can get a larger bus. We don't want to do that. So it's a 14-passenger bus, and that's it. Our friend Tony that we made down there who owns the company, um, we got luck of the draw one night, and we were in the in the – Hotel, hotel, uh, Lucerna in Ensenada, and we went to the front desk, and we're like, we want to get into town. What's the best way? She goes, Uber's the best way. It's the cheapest. Um, she goes, we can call you a cab. We know a great cab company, but Uber's going to be the cheapest way to get into town. And I said, do you have a relationship with a cab company? She goes, oh, yeah. We have a great relationship with this local cab company. We use them all the time. And she was like, but Uber's cheaper. And I'm like, no, 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 I don't want cheaper. I want somebody who you trust and know. That's who I want. And she goes, okay, I'll call you a cab. So up shows this guy, Tony, Tony Baloney, and him and his family own the company. So they have like 45, literally like 45 Dodge Caravans, that style vans, minivans, and then they have buses and 14-passenger uh, buses and the 44-passenger buses. So him and his family own this for the like, since, I don't know, he's to like 30 years, they own a transportation company there. So we were actually able to get one of the owners, one of the family members, and we connected with him, and he was our driver for the rest of the time there. I was like, you know, we're going to go here tomorrow. Just drive us all day. And he's like, perfect, I'll do that. And then when we got back the following day, um, we were like, you know, we'll need you in the afternoon, this and that. He's like, perfect. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, at, I'm at your beck and call, basically. And and I told him I was interested in buying some cowboy boots. So he's like, ah, I'll take you to the, to the three stores in Ensenada that have cowboy boots. I, there was, I didn't buy anything, but I was looking at cowboy boots and nothing, nothing, nothing fancy in me. But he was like, go. And so he actually took us and came into the store with us. And, uh, and uh, you know, helped to sort of assist us in shopping. It was almost like a tour guide, and he was fantastic. So him and I have been messaging back and forth like crazy to, uh, to uh, start planning, planning dates and, and logistics and things like that. So, um, you know, by paying a little more, we got far, far more because an Uber driver would not have been able to help us out like that. And he just was – it was amazing, totally amazing what he, what he did for us. So um, connections just seemed to happen. So that's it, folks. I got to get going. Um, got to do my next appointment here. So everybody, thank you very much for tuning in. Thank you, Jamie. And I really, really appreciate the support. Uh, without you, we couldn't be doing this. So um, thank you very much. And we'll talk to you soon or see you soon. And everybody be safe.